So, so, so. I've seen some teams without Erling Haaland in their draft, in their wildcard draft. And I think you're all, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the right word to say is, but I think that is absolutely ludicrous. Um, 14.1 million. Yes, that's a lot of money, but the guy's 92% owned. He's got six, eight goals, sorry, one assist this season. Eight goals in seven games, nine returns in, in seven games. It's still ridiculous. If he carries it on, he's getting 38 goals. Um, I can't understand why people are taking him out. Yes, the fixtures, um, Arsenal away, Brighton at home, United away, Bournemouth at home, Liverpool away, Spurs, uh, Liverpool at home, Spurs at home, Villa away. Like some of the tougher fixtures you can get, but it's Manchester City. Like, um, if you're going to want any, <laughs> um, you're going to want Man City players for the whole season. They just won the treble. They've just won the league. Erling Haaland's just scored forty odd goals in all comps. Um, I actually don't understand why people are taking him out. Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game. Where fantasy Premier League runs in his veins. From transfers to captains, he's always on top. Guiding you through every game week nonstop. They say Rue got that style of flow. Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show. Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe. If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe. G'day mate, welcome back to the channel. My name's FPL Rue and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at the best possible wildcard draft you can pick. Um, if you are on a wildcard, even if you're not, um, these are some of the best players that you're going to want for um, the foreseeable future, basically until you play your next wildcard. Um, so definitely stay tuned for this video. We're going to be looking at the players, the best players that you should be to be bringing in. Um, go through goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, forwards, looking at the team lines up for game week eight, nine and ten. Um, and if you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe and like this video too. So we'll start off in goal. Um, I have gone for the two cheapest, probably playing goalkeepers. So I've gone for Turner, four million. Um, he is a player that I'm sure a lot of you have in your team already, even though he is only 14.5% owned. Um, I think he is the best replacement at the moment. Yes, he made an absolute howler in the game on Sunday um, against Brentford, and he should have given away the penalty too as well. Um, but I think he'll just be able to keep his spot. I know Forrest did buy in a new goalkeeper to kind of be their number one, but Turner has actually kept that place. He did start the season pretty well, but um, his, I think his days are numbered. But for now, I think he is fine to have as your substitute goalkeeper behind someone like um, Alfonso Areola. So the West Ham keeper has done pretty well this season. Yes, the clean sheets haven't been haven't been great. He's only kept one, which was in the last game. Um, but he is looking really, really good in terms of value for money. Um, he did uh, get 10 pointer against Chelsea as well earlier on in the season. For me, it is a tough one as he does have Newcastle and Villa. But after that, West Ham's fixtures do look really, really good. Um, Everton at home, Brentford away, Forest at home, Burnley away, Alice at home up until game week 15. So for me, he is a player that you can't really pass by for that price point um, and for them fixtures. Um, looking at defence, uh, I think Matty Cash is essential. Um, Villa's fixtures do look, look really, really good. Um, Wolves away, West Ham at home, Luton at home, Forest away, Fulham at home. Um, some really, really good fixtures in there. And um, he's shown this season he can get attacking returns. He scored two and got an assist. In terms of um, clean sheets, hasn't been great, too, but no one has been so far this season. I think at the top is three clean sheets, which is Edison, um, so Man City, Palace, um, and one other team that I can't actually remember. But So two clean sheets is not actually that bad for this season. Um, his attacking numbers do look really, really good. And if you can't afford him, yes, you can go for Digne. But having said that, uh, Moreno is back. So he is, his spot is, his days are numbered in that team. I feel like as Moreno is the better player. Um, so I think go for cash if you can. A defender that I'm sure you won't see in a lot of drafts, but I've actually gone for Jamel Lascelles. Um, 3.9 million. Um, he did start the last game and got a clean sheet. Um, now that Botman's out, he is like, he's playing centre-back. And Newcastle's fixtures do carry on being pretty good. So West Ham away is not the easiest, but um, Newcastle are a good team. Alice at home and Wolves away. Um, so that is someone that can come in for a couple of weeks, do a job, get you a couple of clean sheets, and then probably sit in your bench for 3.9 million. You can't really complain with that one. 
Uh, next up, again, another player that you won't see in a lot of teams. I have gone for Joachim Anderson, the Palace defender. Um, for me, Palace are a team that have kind of gone under the radar this season. They've played Arsenal, they've played Brentford away, they've played Villa away, they've played Man United away, um, and, they, and they've looked pretty, pretty good. They've won three games, they've drawn two. They've only lost against Arsenal and Villa. Um, clean sheets as well. He's done pretty well, three clean sheets, Palace. Um and Joachim Anderson has got two goals this season, so he is an attacking threat. For me, though, yes, 4.7 million is probably a bit on the pricier side that you want to pay for a Palace um, defender. But for me, I'm looking at post game week 10. Yes, they've got Forest at home in game week eight, but game week nine, they've got Newcastle away, then they've got Spurs at home. But after that, they've got Burnley away, Everton at home, Luton away, West Ham away, Bournemouth at home. <laughs> Unbelievable fixture run. And I think Palace um, do look very, very solid. And I think they are a good team. And I think Anderson can get you an attack in return too. So that's why I've gone for him. Um, a doggy at 4.8 million now. He is 4.7 as he is in my team here. Um, again, clean sheets. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sticky one this season. It hasn't really been um, as consistent. Spurs have kept two, two clean sheets though um, in game week two and three. But a doggy, you are getting them attacking returns as well. Um, so kind of doubling up on on the clean sheet or attacking returns. He's got two assists this season, but um, they have played some really tough games. Spurs, so they've played Brentford away, United at home, Arsenal away, Liverpool at home. Um, for me, I think a doggy is a player that is going to thrive uh, in the easiest fixtures. I think he's going to be used to get into the more attacking options. If they can't break down teams, um, then they'll they'll try and push the wing backs a bit more forward. And I think a doggy can get more assists and goals from that. Luton away, Fulham at home, Palace away, uh, Chelsea at home, Wolves away, Villa at home. Especially them two, eight and nine, they look really, really good. Uh, Luton away and Fulham at home. And I'm going to want a Spurs defender, a Spurs wing back, that is, for, from, from, uh, for them two games. Uh, next up, <clears throat> uh, probably another player that's not going to be in many teams. Um, this draft is a bit of a differential draft, I'd, I'd say. Um, so, Vladimir Kufal. Uh, so, the the West Ham fullback, like I said, West Ham's fixtures do look really, really good. Yes, they've got Newcastle and Villa, but after that, Everton, Brentford, Forest, Burnley, Palace. Um, Pufau is not only good for clean sheets, though. Um, he is a very good attacking return, so he's got three assists in his last three, and two of them games have come against um, City and Liverpool. Um, so it's not just against the easy teams. So um, for me, I think Kufal can be a dangerous option and a bit of a differential coming in at 4.5 million and only 1% owned. Let's get on to the midfield. So in the midfield, it does have two flagged players. So obviously, um, you're going to want to take a look at these players, see if they are injured or not, um, before you obviously bring these into the wild card. But for me, I do feel like they both will be okay for game week eight. Um, and I think they'll be okay for the rest. Well, who knows for the rest of the season, but they'll be okay for game week eight anyway. Um, so Bakayo Saka is a player that a lot of people have excluded from the wild card. Um, and I'm not too sure why. Um, four goals, three assists in seven games this season. Um, and should have been more with the amount of penalties he's given away. He's given away three penalties. Yes, the games on paper look tough. Man City at home, unbelievably tough. Fair enough. Um, but Arsenal are a team that can hurt Man City. They're a team that can score against Man City. Man City are not the tightest defence in the league. Um, and with Chelsea... I don't think Chelsea are any good, really. Um, I think Arsenal can put them to the sword. And then after that, they have a Sheffield United at home. Yes, they've got Newcastle away, but then they've got Burnley at home as well. Um, for me, you're going to want him for Bur for Sheffield United and Burnley at home. Um, yes, if he's injured, it's a different story. Then you can go Salah and drop someone like TRB down to um, Anthony Gordon is a good option or someone like Neto. But... For the moment, let's just assume these players are fit, um, both Diaby and Saka. The reason I've gone for um, Diaby is the fixtures, like I said, with Matty Cash. Um, and he's done pretty well this season. He's got two goals, four assists, so six attacking returns. Um, he does look really, really good. And he got two assists last time out too. Um, he's quick. He, he can finish. He can get goals. He can get assists. And that's what you want from your FPL option. Um, Wolves away, West Ham at home, Luton at home, Forest away, Fulham at home. So some of the best fixtures you can ask for, really. And I think the RB is pretty much essential to any wildcard team. Next up, um, we'll do the Spurs boys together. So Madison and Son. 
Um, I think these two are central too. Madison has shown um, that he can score, can get assists too. Two goals, four assists in the first seven games. Um, yes, he hasn't got attacking returns against Liverpool um, or any of his home games really. So he is a player that that does like to do uh, more away from home. Um, so he's got two assists against Brentford away, one goal against Bournemouth at home, one goal against um, Burnley away. Sorry, but Bournemouth away, Burnley away. Um, two assists against Arsenal away. Um, and the next fixture is Luton away. So who knows if he carries on that trend? You hopefully for a, for a few big results against um, against Luton. Yeah, like I said, they got Fulham at home, Palace away, um, Chelsea at home, Wolves away, Villa at home. So some really good fixtures for Spurs and the way they're playing at the moment. Um, you're going to want Madison in your team. You're going to want Son in your team as well. Um, Son, yes, started the season really really slowly. Um, three, well, three blanks basically. Um, before Bournemouth away. Then he got the hat trick against um, uh, Burnley away. He got two goals against uh, Arsenal away, and then he got the goal against Liverpool. So six goals this season. Um, and with them fixtures, you're gonna again, you're gonna want Son in your team. Number nine, um, probably gonna be on penalties. Uh, for me, Son and Madison are essential. Next up again, a player that I've not seen in many drafts um, is really shocking with the, with how great um, West Ham's fixtures are. He's only fifteen percent owned to seven point two million. Um, Jared Bowen, he's he's got five goals, one assist this season. Um, for me, that is a great return considering um, look, uh, West Ham. I've had Man City and Liverpool in that running and Chelsea as well, but I don't know if that counts anymore. Um, and Brighton away as well, so that, that probably counts if Chelsea doesn't count. Um, and their fixtures do look great. Newcastle at home, yes, Villa away, not the best, but Everton at home, Brentford away, Forest at home. Uh, Burnley away, Palace at home. So for me, Bowen is a, is a player I do like the look of, and I think West Ham um, are going to look even better as the season progresses. They, as they had had some tough fixtures um, to start the season, they did start the season really well with a draw and three wins, but then obviously they lost to um, Man City and, and Liverpool, where they did win against Sheffield United last time out. And for me, I think West Ham can can beat them teams comfortably, and um, Bowen getting in a score sheet. We'll move on to the to the forwards. So, so, so. I've seen some teams without Erling Haaland in their draft, in their wildcard draft. And I think you're all, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the right word to say is, but I think that is absolutely ludicrous. Um, 14.1 million. Yes, it's a lot of money, but the guy's 92% owned. He's got six, eight goals, sorry, one assist this season. Eight goals in seven games, nine returns in, in seven games. It's still ridiculous. If he carries it on, he's getting 38 goals. Um, I can't understand why people are taking him out. Yes, the fixtures, um, Arsenal away, Brighton at home, United away, Bournemouth at home, Liverpool away, Spurs, uh, Liverpool at home, Spurs at home, Villa away. Like some of the tougher fixtures you can get, but it's Manchester City. Like, um, If you're going to want any player, um, you're going to want Man City players for the whole season. They just won the treble. They've just won the league. Erlen Harden's just scored 40 odd goals in all comps. Um, I actually don't understand why people are taking him out. Yes, there's been some content creators that have said, oh, I kind of understand it. But for me, I don't get it at all. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think is it possible to go FPL season without Erlen Harden for any period and he's not injured? Um, please let me know below because for me, I don't see it as an option at all. Uh, so yeah, Harden's in the draft. <laughs> um, we'll go for the sub. Uh, forward first, so Cameron Archer, Sheffield United forward, one goal, one assist. Um, the cheapest playing forward, not much to say about him really. Um, you can play him in the next game, pull him away if you do have to go for Anthony Gordon, who's suspended. Um, if you're doing the seller draft, but um, you're not going to be going to be playing him much. But he is a, a a good player to have, especially as um City and Brentford. Um, you don't have any Brentford players in this draft, but a City and Brentford do blank in game week 18, so you're probably going to want to play. Someone like Archer um, instead of Haaland, who who obviously blanks and and he does uh, Aston Villa away. It's not the easiest game, but um, at least it's not it's not the worst. So Archer's in there. Um, Ollie Watkins also goes in after his absolute mega haul, twenty three pointer um, in game week seven. He's got four goals, six assists now. Um, before that game, he only got one goal. Um, so yes, I understand that people think it's a bandwagon. But with the fixtures coming up, you can't really argue um, not having Ollie Watkins in your team. Wolves away, West Ham at home, Luton at home, Forest away, Fulham at home. Um, like I said with Diaby, um, 
really do look really, really good. And I think the double up is essential. Um, the triple up actually with cash is essential if you are on a wild card. Um, next, we'll talk about um, how the team looks for game week eight, how, who we're going to captain, um, and then look at transfers game week nine and 10 as well. Yes, it's not ideal starting Ariola against Newcastle at home, but this is how the team does line up for game week eight. Um, I think I'd rather Ariola at home to Newcastle than turn it away to Palace. Um, I don't really trust uh, Nottingham Forest to keep a clean sheet <clears throat> against anyone, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Turner's just there as a little backup that, that does play. Um, Odogi does get a starting spot with um, Luton away, Anderson with Forrest at home, and Cash with Wolves away. Um, Lascelles was close, but I think West Ham will score in that game, um, and I think Newcastle will score too, so that's why Kufauer and Lascelles hasn't, haven't made it. Um, Diaby with Wolves away, Madison and Son with Luton away. Uh, Son will be my captain for for this game week, game week eight. Luton away, I think that's a great fixture for Son. Um, we've seen how good Spurs can be away from home um, and the amount of goals they scored. They scored five against Burnley, um, another newly promoted side. So um, Son is, is going to be my captain over Haaland. Uh, Bowen does have Newcastle at home, um, Saka, Man City at home, and then Haaland, New Arsenal away, Watkins, Wolves away. Um, the reason I have gone for Son is that is one of Haaland's hardest fixtures of the season. So if I'm not going to captain someone else in that fixture, then I'll probably never captain anyone else. Uh, that's the reason I have gone from Haaland. I think the team does look really, really strong this game week. Yes, the obvious stands out are having teams that play each other, for example, Newcastle and West Ham. Um, also Arsenal and Man City. Uh, I'm... Not worried at all, to be honest. Um, I think Saka can score against City and I think Haaland can score against Arsenal. Um, and I think Bowen can score against Newcastle too. Um, it's just it's not it's not ideal for maximum kind of points, but I'm not playing my Newcastle defender, so um I'm not I don't have any Arsenal or or Man City defenders, so there's not really a crossover. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm really happy with my team. Game week nine actually sees Turner come into the net, um Luton at home, so one of the best fixtures of the season. Ariola does have new, uh, at Villa away, which is a tough game. Fulham at home for a doggy. Lascelles does come in with Palace at home. Um, good fixture for him. Um, again, if he if he is in the team or if Botman's back, then he'll be dropping to the bench and I'll probably play Kufal. Um, Cash uh, with West Ham at home. Diaby with West Ham at home. Uh, Madison and Son with Fulham at home. Bowen with Villa away. Saka Chelsea away. Ireland with Brighton at home, Watkins with West Ham at home. Um, so again, Villa and West Ham are playing each other, which is not the best. And I do have a Villa defender, but um, yeah, it's just one of them things. And, and I think both teams can score in that game. So hopefully Cash does get an attack in return. So game week 10, does see Ariola come back in with Everton at home. A doggy Palace away. Kufau gets his first start. Um, of the season with Everton at home. Uh, so double West Ham defence in that game. Uh, Cash Luton at home. Diaby Luton at home. Uh, Matoma does come in for Madison. Um, again, this can be Bowen, but I have gone for uh, Madison, so I've taken out two Spurs players. Um, who knows, at that time of season, you might not want to take him out, so you could take out Bowen or Saka instead, um, but I've just done it for, for the time being, just to just as they had the worst fixtures out of Bowen and Saka, but we're closer to the time, you'll see who you prefer to take out. So Matoma and Salah do come in. Um, Salah's great run of fixtures and and Brighton's fixtures do change too. Uh, Bowen, again, uh, Everton at home. Salah, Forrest at home. Um, Saka, Sheffield United at home. Haaland, Man United away. Um, so Saka could be a potential, I mean, sorry, Salah could be a potential captain option this week with Forrest at home where Haaland has Man United away, but the way Man United play at the moment, no chance. Um, Watkins has Luton at home, so some really good home fixtures for most of my um, teams. So Everton at home, Luton at home, Fulham at home, Forest at home, Sheffield United at home. Um, so really happy with that. I think game week 10 could be a high-scoring game week. So game week 11, sees Ariola stay in the net with Brentford away. Anderson comes back in with Burnley away. Kufau with Brentford away. Cash with Forest away, Diaby Forest away, Matoma Everton away, Bowen Brentford away, um, Salah with Luton away, Saka with Newcastle away, Haaland Bournemouth at home, and Watkins with Forest away. Um, so 
for this, you could make a transfer. You could try and get a Liverpool defender in. Um, but I don't think you have enough cash. I do like to look at that defence already. Um, but you never know injuries. It's good to have a chance in there. Sometimes it's not good to to plan your transfer out too far in advance as well as um, injuries and suspensions, etc. do happen. Um, with this team, all your players look good. So there is an opportunity to make a transfer if you want to. But um, there'll probably be a fire that you have to put out. Let me know what you think of my wildcard draft. Um, do you disagree? Do you agree with any players? Uh, leave a comment below, like this video too, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.